I'm Dr. Fakir Ravelli and this is nosocomial pneumonia in adults. The first learning objective is given a patient with hospital acquired or ventilator associated pneumonia designed appropriate empiric therapy. At this point you should know that community acquired pneumonia is relatively less severe type of pneumonia caused by less resistant pathogens such as strep pneumo, H flu, Muraxella catarralis and atypical organisms. When we look at the ventilator associated pneumonia, it's relatively a more severe disease with mortality as high as 30% and it's typically caused by more resistant pathogens. So the organisms that you want to target empirically are Staphylococcus aureus, which could include methicillin susceptible Staphylococcus aureus or methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus as well as gram-negatives such as Pseudomonas aeruginosa, Calypsiola pneumoniae, and Cinetobacter species. And these organisms are usually drug, uh, more likely to be drug-resistant. Because VAP is caused by drug-resistant organism, it is extremely important to be aware of drug-resistant variations. These variations in resistant patterns can occur at, con uh, you know, at country level, so different countries have different patterns. Uh, within regions, so different cities or, you know, different parts of a large city may have different patterns, as well as hospitals. Different hospitals can have different patterns of resistance. Even within a single institution or single hospital, different ICUs can have different resistant patterns. And of course, another thing that's important to know is the source of specimen. For example, if we have organisms from the urine versus organism from the pulmonary specimen, they can have different resistant patterns. And that's why it's recommended that all hospitals regularly gener generate and disseminate local antibiogram, ideally one that's specific to their I ICU populations if possible. And it's recommended that hospitals do this at least once, uh, once a year. Now, one key recommendation from the guideline is that while we want to empirically cover for Staphylococcus aureus, if based on the local resistant patterns, it's unlikely to be, um, you know, uh, Staphylococcus aureus, that's MRSA, it's probably okay to just cover for MSSA instead of MRSA. Now, in real world, I haven't really seen any physicians that would not cover MRSA in patients with WAP, but the guideline is making a point that if based on resistant patterns is unlikely to be MRSA, it's probably okay to uh, only target MSSA. And there are some agents that cover Pseudomonas as well as MSSA. So Piperson, Tazobectam uh, and Cefepim, for example, uh, cover Pseudomonas as well as MSSA. And while they do not cover MRSA, if based on local resistant patterns, we think that it's unlikely to, uh, to have VAP due to MRSA, it will be okay to use them. Now, who exactly needs to receive empiric coverage for MRSA? Generally speaking, both MRSA and pseudomonas are organisms that are that originate from the healthcare settings. So patients who have received prior IV antibiotic in the past three months or 90 days need to receive one agent that has uh, coverage for MRSA, so typically vancomycin. Also, patients with VAP who are being treated in the ICUs where the prevalence of MRSA is more than 10 to 20%, or if the prevalence of MRSA is not known, these patients need to receive uh, one agent that, ha that is active for MRSA. Now, the same is uh, true for pseudomonas when it comes to um, IV antibiotic treatment in the past 90 days. Now, with pseudomonas, it's recommended to use two agents that are active against pseudomonas empirically especially in uh, ICUs where the, uh, you know, when the susceptibility rate of pseudomonas to the agents that we're using are uh, less than um, 90%. In other words, the resistance rate is more than 10%. Or if the rate of susceptibility on the antibiogram is not available, or if the patient has a structural lung disease, such as cystic fibrosis. So these patients need to receive uh, two agents that are active against pseudomonas empirically until we get susceptibility results back. 
Now, if you are in a ICU where the rate, the susceptibility rate for a specific agent is more than 90%, in other words, the rate of resistance is less than 10%, then a single agent is sufficient. Now, keep in mind that most anti-pseudomonal antibiotics, with the exception of delafloxacin, do not cover MRSA. So when we use two agents that are active against pseudomonas, we typically end up adding a third agent for coverage of MRSA. So typically vancomycin. And the reason the guideline recommends two agents active against pseudomonas for empiric therapy is that in case one of the agents doesn't cover the pseudomonas, the other one uh, should cover it. And this is not for every patient. These are patients that are at risk of having multi-drug resistant uh, pseudomonas. And of course, once a pathogen has been identified and susceptibilities are known, there is no reason to continue combination therapy. Now, your MRSA coverage um, antibiotics are typically vancomycin and linazolate. It's important to not use daptomycin, so you should avoid daptomycin because it's inactivated by uh, surfactant. Now, alternatively, ceftaroline is also available should the patient be unable to take vancomycin or linazolid. But the, uh, you know, the evidence is with vancomycin and linazolid. Now, for, for the two agents that we use for pseudomonas, one should be a, a beta-lactam and then a second one should be a non-beta-lactam. So the beta-lactams that we choose are piperacillin tazobactam, cefepime, ceftazidim, imipenem, meropenem, or asterinam. And non-beta-lactam would be uh, ciprofloxacin, levofloxacin, amicacin, gentamicin, tobramycin. Now, we also have polymyxins like colicin and polymyxin B that are usually reserved as last line. So let's say if someone has received IV antibiotic in the last 90 days, so let's say somebody received ceftriaxone uh, two weeks ago and now they have uh, ventilator-associated pneumonia, uh, we can choose um, an MRSA active agent like vancomycin plus one agent from uh, beta-lactam that's active against pseudomonas. So we can use uh, piperacillin tazobactam, for example, and a, plus a second agent, so uh, ciprofloxacin. So the patient will end up receiving three agents. So ciprofloxacin plus piperacillin tazobactam plus vancomycin. It is extremely important not to use aminoglycosides as monotherapy. So if, if you were to use gentamicin, for example, it has to be in combination with uh, one of these uh, beta-lactams. Uh, because uh, there's, there has been, in the studies that we have with uh, aminoglycoside monotherapy, the rate of mortality was higher. Now that we know how to treat ventilator-associated pneumonia, Let's take a look at treatment of HAP. So for the most part, we, we follow the same principles. Majority of evidence is with WAP. So we have less uh, or fewer, we have fewer studies with hospital um, acquired pneumonia. So majority of these recommendations are derived from WAP. So I let you, so, so you can see that, you know, IV antibiotic in the past 90 days is still driving most of these uh, recommendations. And you can see that we use the same antibiotics. So if someone has HAP and is not at risk for mortality and no risk factors for MRSA, they can receive a single one of these agents. So these agents will cover pseudomonas as well as MSSA. Whereas if someone is at risk for MRSA, uh, but not at risk for mortality, they can receive uh, one of these agents for pseudomonas plus either vancomycin or linazole to cover for MRSA. And of course, if someone is at high risk for mortality, uh, then that patient should receive two agents for pseudomonas plus one agent for vancomycin. So one of the beta-lactams plus uh, one of the non-beta-lactams active against pseudomonas plus an agent for MRSA.